Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P-Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, temporarily stymied by the mysterious murder of Lippy Williams, Clark Kent is unaware that Sam Robbins is being led into a death trap. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, Ed, you know what's even more fun than getting the swell prize in each package of Kellogg's Pet? Why, it's collecting all three different kinds of pet prizes and seeing how many of each kind you can collect. You get loads of fun for weeks and weeks. First off, it's mighty exciting to see which kind of prize you'll get in your next pet package. Maybe it's a bright-colored comic button picturing a favorite comic strip character, 18 and all to, to pin on your jacket or your beanie cap. Or uh, maybe it's a bird picture, each with a full description on the reverse side. Yes, sir, or maybe your next pet prize will be one of seven colored cardboard plane models, a sense to put together. Yes, sir, you keep right on having fun when you're collecting the prizes in packages of Pep, the sunshine cereal. And all the while, you can be enjoying breakfast with those crunchy golden whole wheat flakes of Pep. Flakes all crisp and fresh and, and catchy tasting as you spoon them up. I mean Pep makes with a flavor in a strictly terrific way. So get going, gang. Ask Mom to get you Kellogg's Pep tomorrow and look for your prize inside the package. Now, the adventures of Superman. Although a web of circumstantial evidence has been so cleverly planted that Sam Robbins appears to be the only suspect for the shooting of Joe Martin, his best friend and war buddy, Clark Kent insists that Robbins is innocent. Lippy Williams, reporter for the scandal-mongering Metropolis Clarion, knew that Robbins was not guilty, since he had been an instrument of Big George Latimer, unscrupulous state political boss, in planting the frame-up. But when Latimer arranged for Robbins' transfer to a jail in a section of the state known to be a hotbed of racial and religious bigotry, Williams called it murder and refused to be a party to it. Meanwhile, unaware of the danger to Robbins due to Latimer's latest move, but suspecting that Williams knew enough to help clear the accused ex-GI... Kent took Sam's mother to the clarion office in the hope of making Lippy talk. Kent and Mrs. Robbins were talking with Abner Brown, the clarion editor, when a call came in from the police. Turning white, the editor hung up and gasped. That was the police, Kent. Lippy Williams was just found on River Road. Dead. Taking Mrs. Robbins with him, Kent rushes out of the clarion office and into a cab. A few minutes later, we find him talking with Inspector Henderson in front of the city morgue. What's the story on this killing, Inspector? Well, we don't know much yet, Kent, except that Williams was found on the side of the road just inside city limits. The uh, medical examiner said he'd been dead about, oh, half an hour when a patrol car spotted him. Any idea who did it? Nothing to hang a hat on. But, uh, and this isn't for publication, Kent. Okay. But my hunch is that Williams was done in by someone he libeled in a clarion story. Oh? Yeah, there are plenty of guys in this town with a motive like that, you know. Could be. My guess is he was put away for knowing too much. Knowing too much? About what? About the shooting of Joe Martin. Huh? Hey, Kent, if you know something you've been holding... I don't know anything except that Sam Robbins is innocent. But I have got some ideas, and that's one of them. If Mrs. Robbins, Sam's mother, can identify Williams as the man who came to see her, I'll explain what's in my mind. Okay. Let her view the body. Where is she? Waiting for me in that cab. Come on, we'll take her into the morgue. Was this the man who came to your house yesterday, Mrs. Robbins? Well, well, was it? Please, Inspector, please. I know this is trying, Mrs. Robbins, but it must be done to help Sam. Now, don't try to talk. Just nod your head. Was this the man... You're positive? All right, that's all I want to know. Come on, Mrs. Robbins, I'll put you in a cab. Wait for me in your car, Inspector. All right, Captain, I give. What was Lippy Williams doing at the Robbins' house yesterday, and what's that got to do with what happened tonight? Here it is, Inspector. 
I'm practically certain that Lippy planted the gun in Sam's room. What gun? The one with which Joe Martin was shot. Oh? What makes you so sure of that? Because I happen to know that Lippy came to the Robbins' house a half hour or so before the state troopers showed up and found the gun. He posed as one of Sam's buddies. Mrs. Robbins went into the kitchen to get him something to eat, leaving him alone in the living room. She was gone several minutes. And you think Lippy, a reporter, slipped into Robbins' room and planted the gun, huh? That's right. Why? Because I think he was working with the people who have deliberately framed Sam. What people? And who says he was framed? I do. So does Sam's G.I. friends who were standing next to him at the Capitol when Joe Martin was shot. They all swear he did not have a gun. And I'm sure Joe Martin will say the same thing when he's able to talk. But Big George Latimer said he saw Robin pull a gun. I know, I know. But I believe Big George Latimer is, uh, well, mistaken. You won't find many takers for that idea in this state. But go on. You say Williams was working for someone who wanted to frame Robin. Like who? Like whoever wants to discourage the veterans from complaining that they're being discriminated against in state job appointments on the basis of race and religion? I'll be hanged if I can see a connection between the G.I. beef against the state administration and William's murder. Well, maybe I'm mistaken. I don't like to agree with you on that, Inspector, but... Watch your manners, Kent. Sorry, but you asked for it. Never mind. Just tell me how these two separate headaches tie in. I've already told you. I think Lippy either found out about the plot to frame Sam Robbins or was in on it for his scandal sheet. So? So he was bumped off because he knew too much, huh? Right. No. No, I don't buy that, Kent. Well? I still think Williams was knocked off by somebody he slandered in the clarion. Okay, how do we find out? Well, the first thing to do is to trace his movements tonight. Just what I was about to suggest. All right, let's go see Williams' editor, Abner Brown. Okay. Take us to the Metropolis Clarion, Rally. <laughs> Williams was this evening? Why, no, I don't, Inspector. When was the last time you saw him? Alive, I mean. Well, this afternoon. Stopped in here to file a story and then left. Did you say where he was going? No. Nope. Did you hear from him after he left? Well, yes, I did. He phoned in. Where from? I don't know. What did he call about, Brownie? None of your business, Kent. Well, it's my business, so tell me. What did he phone in about? He said he expected to have an important story for us soon and to stand by it. That was all. What kind of a story? I don't have to divulge that. Now, look here, Brownie. Don't pull you... that tone on me, Inspector. I know my rights. Oh, come on, Brownie. It's no secret that Lippy was working exclusively on the Sam Robbins story, is it? Well, no. I suppose there's no harm in admitting that. And that's what he called about? Uh-huh. What did he say? Well, nothing much. Only that he expected to have an important story in a couple of hours and to stand by. Well, maybe that's enough. Come on, Inspector. Now I think it's time I had a talk with Governor Wheeler. Leaving Inspector Henderson, Clark Kent proceeds alone to the state capitol building for a talk with Governor Wheeler. Meanwhile, on the edge of a dirt road detour near a small upstate town, two men armed with rifles crouch in the moonless darkness beside an old barn. Six other men, similarly armed, spot behind bushes across the narrow country lane. How long has it been since Latimer called you, Dean? Well, about two hours. You shouldn't take them troopers that long to get this far with that Robbins fella. Now, don't you worry. They'll be along soon now. Maybe they was held up in traffic or something. Maybe. Can't help being impatient, though. Just itching to get my hands on that rotten foreigner. And so am I. We'll teach him what it means to shoot a real American and a war veteran at that. You bet we will. But hang on to your patience. You wouldn't have had this chance if Latimer hadn't tipped me they was transferring Robbins to the county seat tonight. That's right. You know, I'm surprised. Hold it. What's the matter? I thought I saw Harry's flashlight up the highway. It must have been a car's light, though. So. I hope there's only the two troopers with Robbins. Well, that's all they usually send with one prisoner. Anyhow, there are eight of us, not counting Harry. They won't be expecting anything. It won't be so good if another car happens to turn into the detour behind them. Well, if one does, Harry will head it off. Not much traffic out this way at night, though. Hmm. And did you see what this Daily Planet said today, Dean, about Sam Robbins being a good American and not a foreigner? That stinking paper. All those veterans who are hollering for state jobs are foreigners and radicals. Just because they were in the Army, they think they got everything coming to them. Yep. We worked to get Governor Wheeler and the party elected, and these guys want state jobs, same as us, because they're ex-GIs. They're all radicals, that's why, like Robbins. We got to teach those guys a lesson. Maybe when we get through with Robbins, those other foreigners will see that we hunt cent Americans mean business. You said it. They better hold it. Huh? There's Harry's signal. Yeah, yeah, I see it. That means the trooper's car turned into the detour. 
Look, Dean, you can see the headlights. Uh-huh. Hey, you guys, get ready. Come on, Mart. Get this block across the road before they come around the bend. Yeah, let's go. Chasing two long saw horses, Dean Evans and Mark Wells drag them into the road, into the path of the approaching car bearing Sam Robbins and the unsuspecting state troopers. We'll be back in a moment with the dramatic climax of today's episode. So stand by. Say, you know what keeps the many fellows and girls all hepped up about dashing into breakfast on the double quick? Why, a sunny golden toasted bowl of Kellogg's Pep. Yes, sir. When Pep leads off the menu, it's mighty hard to wait for breakfast. You keep thinking how tender and how crisp those whole wheat flakes are. And you keep looking forward to your first taste of Pep's keen sunshine flavor. And then, when you do dig into your bowl of Pep, was there ever such a smooth treat? And say, while we're speaking of smooth, did you ever see anything to beat the slick prizes Pep gives you? Three different kinds of prizes, one or the other in each package of Pep. For instance, your next prize may be a bird picture in brilliant color with a full description on the reverse side. Collect all 24 of them, and will you be wise on birds? Or uh, maybe your next pet prize will be one of seven colored cardboard plane models, easy to put together. Or maybe it'll be a bright colored comic button, picturing a favorite comic strip character, 18 and all to, to pin on your jacket or your beanie cap. There's one or the other of these three knockout prizes in every pet package. So ask Mom to be sure and get you Kellogg's Pet, the sunshine cereal. <laughs> State police car bearing two uniformed troopers and Sam Robbins has just swung off Highway 120 into a narrow dirt road detour. Now, turning a bend, the troopers see two long sawhorses hung with a red lantern blocking the dark road. The man at the wheel applies his brakes and speaks to his companion who is in the rear seat with Sam. What's the matter with these road workers? They turn us off into a detour and then block it. Yeah, that's a funny one. Better get out and have a look, Bill. Okay. Put your hands up, trooper. Put, hey, well, put them up, I said. I reach for your guns and you're both dead men. Holy smokes. Four, six, eight masked guys, all with rifles. Yeah. What's the idea? What do you want? We want your prisoner, Sam Robbins. What? You want him for what? That ain't none of your business. We want that dirty foreign radical, see? And we mean to take him and we have to shoot you to do it. So don't try to stop us. Okay, men. Go get him. Helplessly, the two troopers stand with hands upraised as three armed and masked men move forward to where Sam Robbins sits in the rear seat of the police car. What will happen to the ex-GI, whose big crime in the minds of these men of hate and bigotry is that he attends a church different from their own? Don't miss Monday's exciting episode to hear what happens when Superman learns what took place on the narrow, dark detour. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is the copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. You know, gang, famous names are often family names, like the Kellogg family of cereals. And here's a famous member that makes breakfast mighty swell. It's Kellogg's shredded wheat, full ripe whole wheat, made into tender, plump biscuits that fit your bowl. Toasted just right, too, for crispness and natural nut-sweet flavor. As for nutrition, well, Kellogg's shredded wheat is made of finest whole wheat. Mom likes that. And the economy of 15. 15 biscuits in every package. Remind Mom to get Kellogg's shredded wheat. And be sure to be with us on Monday for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.